amor While shepherds kept their watching Over silent flocks by night Behold throughout the heavens There shone a holy light Go tell it on the mountain Over the hills and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain That Jesus Christ is born Shepherds fear to tremble when low the earth rings. Ring out the angel chorus that hail the Savior's birth. Tell it on the mountain, over the hills, and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in a lonely manger, the humble Christ, Christ was born, and God sent us salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills, and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Yes, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Are you glad for that today? You may be seated. We're glad to have you here today. Good looking crowd on this Sunday morning. Let me share some announcements with you. First of all, that this coming Wednesday, uh, December 21st, uh, we'll all meet in the fellowship hall. We will have a devotional time, and then we will be having fellowship and, and uh, uh, snacks, finger food. I've never decided what fingers like to eat, but whatever that is, bring your finger food and, and uh, desserts, and we'll gather together on Wednesday evening. And then... Uh, Next Sunday, we are not having services. This is a family day, and so we will be celebrating Christmas with our families, and so please be aware of that. Brother Alan Thacker has a report to give us about yesterday's ministry to the community. Thank you. Well, I was a small piece of it, but everybody in here was a big piece of it. Uh, I've got the privilege of, of kind of giving everybody an update on what was done uh, through the uh, through the Christmas program ministries uh, and yesterday there was a hundred kids that got gifts because of y'all's love and giving uh, in addition to that 40 families got boxes of food with hams and a devotional book and then earlier 30 families received uh, bags and groceries with a ham so give yourself a big hand uh, that's a whole lot of families around town that got blessed because of the church and your giving and, and love. Thank you. What a wonderful thing. I love the fact that we are reaching out to the community and we don't put any restrictions on who gets what and uh, we don't say you can have food if you come to our church. We just ha are reaching out and we've had people saved. We've had people come into our church. We've had people return to their own church after they had uh, received from us. And so we thank God for Sister Norma and her crew that have done so many wonderful things in that. Pastor is not with us today. Pastor is, is uh, not well today. And uh, he's, uh, nothing has been uh, set in stone. He's having some symptoms that don't look good uh, in the COVID direction, but he has not uh, received the final word on that. So we want to continue praying for him and for Sister Brenda. Uh, uh, she's being the nurse that she is and taking care of him. Are you glad you're in the Lord's house today? Amen. Amen.
Let's sing and worship the Lord. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ While fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy Repeat, repeat the sounding joy He rules the world with truth and grace And makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders and wonders of his love angels we have heard on high sweetly singing o'er the place and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. Oh, 
Let's join in prayer today. Would you stand with us? As I mentioned a moment ago, we need to pray for Pastor Keith and for Sister Brenda. Also, Doug Langley and Steve Hoke, Smitty Lackey, Raymond Lawrence, Dean and Tom and Dina Payne, Johnny Brown, Benjamin Baker, Amanda Anderson, Michael McMullen, this is Sister Pat's son, Joe Langley, Mary Holmes, Chester Williams. Chester is with us today. So glad to see him today. <laughs> Sheila Spicer, Sheila Ostrom, Bob and Ann Hammond, Jeanette MacArthur, Carolyn Ox, and the Russell Prater family. And uh, also our shut-ins, Betty Rogers and Loretta Hughes, who is here with us today. We're so glad. Let's join together in prayer. Father, thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. Thank you today for your many, many blessings. I pray, God, for a special touch upon this service today. Would you pour out of your spirit and touch us? I pray, God, for each need that has been represented here today. Pray, God, that you would reach down and heal the sick, raise up those who are in great need. I pray for those who are... are, are bereaved today from having lost a loved one. I pray that your grace and your mercy would be theirs. I ask you, Lord, that you would come in a very, very special way and touch lives. God, we pray for our pastor today. God, that you would bring healing to him, Lord. God, it does not matter what the illness is, you're able to take care of it. And so, Lord, we bring him to the throne of grace today and pray, God, for a healing touch in his body. Pray for Sister Brenda that you keep your hand upon her, O oh God. Meet us today in this place of worship. Touch our lives, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. A family hiding from the storm Found no place at the keeper's door What was for this child was born Save a world so cold and hollow A sleeping town they did not know Lying in a manger low, a Savior King who had no home has come to heal our sorrow. Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart for God? To write his story. Shepherds counting sheep at night could not feed the glory light. You are precious in his sight. God has come to raise the lowly. Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart for God to write his story? You can come as you are. It may set you apart when you make room in your heart and trade your dreams for his glory. A mother holds the promise tight Every wrong will be made right. The road is 
restraint the burdens light, for in his hands he holds tomorrow. Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart for God to write his story? You can come as you are. It may set you apart when you make room in your heart and trade your dreams for his glory. Make room in your heart. Make room in your heart. Make room in your heart. to pray. 
the wonders of your mighty love. You're my comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath and all that I am never cease to worship you. To the Lord, all the earth, let us sing power and majesty. Praise to the King. Mountains bow down, and the seas will roar at the sound of Your name. I sing for joy at the work of Your hands forever. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days I want to praise the wonders of your mind. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength, let every breath and all that I am never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us see. bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. And nothing compares to the promise I have. Oh, shout to the Lord, all the earth let us see. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have. Oh, nothing compares to the promise I have. And nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise today. Would you stand for the reading of God's Word this morning? Remind you that we do have prayer meeting this evening at 6 o'clock. Come and we'll share our time together before the throne of God. Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 8. I appreciate Sister Lisa today so much. What you don't know is that we're short two people today. And she has been desperately shuffling music back and forth and saying, oh, we can't do that one, let's do this. And So I appreciate her so much. Luke chapter 2, verse 8 says, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto us, or unto you, is born this day in the city of David a Savior, 
which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Father, we thank you for your blessings today. Thank you for your presence in this place. I thank you, God, for your word that shares with us the true meaning of Christmas. Pray, help us today. Anoint us that we may deliver and receive what you have for us. In your name, amen and amen. <clears throat> People have always been busy. They have always had something to occupy their time and their thoughts and their energies. We are not the first generation to run around like chickens with our heads cut off. This has been one of the busiest Christmases I've had in a long time, and I'm not the pastor. And so I, I know that we're all busy. Ask most folks, they'll tell you how busy their lives are. They work hard, they play hard. And I'll guarantee you that if you had asked those shepherds on the hillside that night, are you busy? And they would start enumerating how many sheep they had to watch over and how many lambs had been born and, 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 and how many were sick and, and, and all down through there, how, how they were working uh, 24 hours a day. In fact, they were so busy that they were looked down upon by the religious hierarchy of the day because they were unable to to keep the minute details of the ceremonial law. They were out on the range most of the time with the sheep, and so they couldn't make all the prayer times, and they couldn't make all the worship times, and there was no provision for the many hand washings and ablutions necessary to fulfill each jot and tittle of the rites of Judaism. Furthermore, they could not always uh, attend prayer times and worship times. The, the one thing about raising livestock that I know from my experience growing up on the farm for a few years is that it doesn't matter what you need to do, it doesn't matter where you want to go, those cattle still have to be fed, they have to be tended to, if you have a sick one they still have to be healed and, and all of these things and yet it was these folks that the angels interrupted in their schedule and brought the good news. In, in modern parlance, it might have sounded something like, we interrupt this program to bring you a special message from our sponsor. <laughs> what these angels had to say was of such great importance, in fact, that it was earth shattering. A pivotal time in history. So much so that up until recently, it was the line of demarcation. Everything happening before that was B.C., before Christ. Everything happening after that was A.D., Anno Domini, which means the year of our Lord. I just, I'm, I'm behind times and I know that. I don't keep up. I'm not in the loop on a lot of things. But all of a sudden I realized I'm reading along there and it, it, it's giving dates and saying this is BCE and this is CE. And I had to go and, 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 and talk to Brother Google and, and see what, what that, that needed, what that meant. BCE is before the common era. It's not before Christ, it's before the common era. And, and, and now it's not A.D., Anno Domino, the year of our Lord, it is now C.E., the common era. Why is that? Because we want to take Christ out of our, our vocabulary. We want to take Christ out of our calendar. We want to take Christ out of our research. And so what the angels had to say was this threefold description of that babe who was born in the manger, for he was not just another little Jewish boy, uh, but he was someone who would change the course of history, who would offer a gift to the world that nobody else could offer. Number one, and this comes from, uh, from verse 11, for unto us is born this day in the city of David 
a savior, which is Christ the Lord. So number one, he's a savior. If you want to know why Jesus was born, because we needed a savior. The world needed a savior. They had a world leader. They had the, the Caesar and all those Caesars that followed after that. They, they had all of that, that, that Roman government. They had a world leader. They had inventors who, who were inventing things. They had a common language. They had an intricate roadway system. They, they, they had a marvelous, those marvelous aqueducts to bring fresh water from the mountains. They had great artwork, and they had world-renowned scholars and philosophers. But what they did not have was a savior. And so Jesus came to do that. And, and actually Augustus, who was the, the Caesar at that time, uh, at, at Christ's birth, had proclaimed himself a savior. He, he had reformed everything and his leadership and his rulership were, were better than others. And, and, and he, he thought he was leading people to better life. So he viewed himself as bringing salvation to the humanity. But what the world needed was someone who could bring something that Caesar Augustus could not bring. They needed to be forgiven of their sins. They needed to be redeemed from the curse of iniquity. And only one person could do that. If you remember what the angel said to Mary when the announcement was made about the birth of Jesus, that there was a very definite instruction about what his name would be. It would not be Joseph. He would not be named for him. He would not be named for other people in the family, as was the, the usual case in that day. But Mary was told, call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. You see, that the, the Greek word from which we get the, the name Jesus is Iesus, which is, is a transliteration of the old Hebrew name Joshua. And Joshua means Jehovah's salvation. Although there were other Jewish men and boys named Jesus or Yeshua, it was imperative that he be named that because of the work that he came to do. He shall save his people from their sin. In fact, Jesus said of himself in Luke chapter 19 and verse 10, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. He came to be the Savior, the conquering hero who would remove the, the, the yoke of Rome's oppression was what they were looking for, but that wasn't who he came to be. But he was the one who came to remove the yoke from people and set them free from sin's burden and penalty. And so the angel proclaimed, this day is born a Savior. Number two, they described him in his office. He was Christ. Christ is not his last name. Some people think it is. He's Jesus Christ, and that's his last name, like my last name is Wall. That's not true. It was his title. It was his office of, of, of leadership. The term Messiah was something that all the Jews were familiar with. He, he would be the one who would come to take them back to the glory days of their past. And, and as a descendant of the great King David, he would sit on the throne and rule the nations and, and only in greater fashion. It was a long-awaited and highly expected prophecy and yet he did not come as they expected. And the, the Magi from the east searched for the one born to be the king of the Jews. He was not in Herod's palace. He was not in Herod's lineage. Not even of the homes of the Sanhedrin members. He was born in a stable, a cave, so we're told. A man named Justin Martyr in the first century uh, A.D., I won't give it up. <laughs> Justin Martyr said it was a cave. He was, he was very, very close to, to the time when, when, when Jesus was born. And he said it was a cave and they were used to stable their animals in. And so whether it was a barn like we have or whether it was a cave uh, that they had stabled in, it, it doesn't matter. What matters is that he came to a very humble surrounding 
to be born. His crib, when we were, had our, our little girl, uh, we were so excited about that. Every parent is. Uh, Dylan's a little over the top, but... Uh, <laughs> But we, uh, we, we lived in a 12-wide in a mobile home and pastoring a little church in Fort Worth, and we didn't have the money to buy a crib. And so my sister very, very uh, graciously loaned us the crib that she had had her two little girls in, and, and we set that up. And I, I went and found a piece of carpet and put on the linoleum floor, and, and uh, Donna made some curtain things to, to hang it. And it was kind of a do-it-yourself thing. I will tell you that, that do-it-yourself has been going for a long time, okay? And, and so we did that, and we, we just made that the prettiest thing we could do. It was, the colors were yellow and white, and it was beautiful in there because that was my baby. And, and even before we did that, I went to one of those unfinished furniture places and I found this big comfortable rocking chair and, and I brought it home and I lovingly sanded that and I stained it and I varnished it and there it sat just waiting for me to rock my little girl in. And got her home and the first time I got up in the middle of the night with her and gave her a bottle walking through the living room and I sat down and just as the rear portion of my body touched the seat on that rocker, <laughs> she wasn't having it. She never did like the rocker. I walked that child for miles. <laughs> but when Jesus was born, he had no nice crib. He had no comfortable rocker. He had a feed trough that she laid him in, and that was his bed. That was not the Messiah that Israel was looking for. Herod feared him. When the Magi, the wise men we call them, when they came in search of Jesus and they said, there's a, a star has led us here and, and there's, a, there's a place here we're trying to find. The king of the Jews has been born. And Herod just went ballistic. This was a, this was a, a, a Roman gift to him. He was the, the overseer. He was the more like a... a, a, a governor or a mayor of that area and, and under the Roman rule and, and, and he just didn't want to give that up and so he tried to destroy him even at his birth. Show me where he is and then destroyed all the, 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 the young boys that age so that he would be sure. And of course Mary and Joseph took him to Egypt and got him out of harm's way the religious leaders grew to hate him as he grew in, in, in stature and grew in years and he began his ministry. The, 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 the religious leaders grew to hate him because it, it destroyed their place of superiority. He embarrassed them. He called them tombs filled with dead men's bones. And so they plotted to kill him in his adult life. And the populace, one time they would just be following him and saying, Oh, Jesus, come and heal me. And another time they were yelling, Crucify him, crucify him. They were as unstable as the wind. Back and forth they would go because they, they, they did not understand what his, he had come for. They were, some were disappointed because he did not lead them in insurrection and take the throne by force. And so they turned on him as a seething mob. But the Messiah who came was indeed the real Messiah. He filled every requirement. His lineage was without question. Matthew shows us that. His life was without reproach. Even Pilate agreed to that. But they could not grasp the fact that his kingdom was a spiritual one and it will only be in days to come and it could not be many days from this that he will come back and he will set up his rule on earth. And number three is they described his dignity. 
He was Lord. Jesus Christ, the Lord. Really a character description of Jesus. The first two descriptions were that of those of, of, of what, uh, what he did and still does. This one talks about what he was and still is. In the New Testament, the word is kurios. In the Old Testament, it's Adonai. The Hebrew word is one of three names to which the, 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 the common people referred to God. And so what the writer is saying is that not only is he the one who came to save the world from sin, not only is he the one who will rule the world from the throne of David and have rightful claim to it, but he is God. Pastor has been preaching from, from the first chapter of John on Wednesday night. If, if you haven't been in Sister uh, Norma's class, then you need to be in, in this one. He's doing some fabulous preaching and teaching there. And, and John spent almost the entire first chapter of his gospel instructing us on the deity of Christ, battling against those who claim that he could not have been fully God and fully man. But John proclaimed, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, he called him the Word. That, that word is logos, and, 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 and he did that because in the Greek understanding, they were always, their philosophers and their thinkers were always looking for the, 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 uh, uh, the full truth, the the. The, the, the thing that, that would just encapsulate and encompass every truth that we need. And they called that the Logos. And so John takes a cue from that and he says, you've been looking for the Logos. He's saying the Logos was God and was with God. He's saying to us that all things in, in heaven and in earth and things under the earth, every knee should bow and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Understand and remember that when, uh, when the earth was created, in Genesis it tells us that they got together, the members of the Godhead, and said, let us make man in our image. That means that there was more than one person there. And Jesus, being a part of the Godhead, was there because he was, not because he was a good man, not because he was born in a manger and his conception was immaculate, but because he is Lord, he is God. And when it says in John there that he, he, is God, he was God and, and was with God, not only is that telling us that there is a trinity, but also it is telling us that in reality, in, in makeup, in, 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 in all of what he was, that he was God. There, there were people in, in ancient times and maybe even today who believe that, that, that uh, uh, a man became a god, but this is not that at all. It is God who became a man laid down his, his deity for a moment while he walked among us, walked as a man here, but knowing that he was fully God and fully man. Now, that's what the message the angels interrupted the sh busy shepherds to tell, and that's the message that he co they come today to tell us. We interrupt whatever you're doing with a message from our sponsor. Unto us this day is born a Savior, who is Jesus Christ the Lord. The song, one of the songs we sang this morning was, talked about having room for Jesus. Is there room in your heart for Jesus? Can I modify that a little bit for the sake of, of my message this morning? Is there room in your schedule? Is there time in your day for Jesus? 
I'm aware that most of us here are Christians. There may be some who do not follow the Lord. But, but first of all, to those of us who are Christians, is there room in my day for Jesus? Is there room in my daily schedule? Oh, I'm, I'm retired. You know, I don't, I don't get up and go to work every day. But I'm amazed at how many things fill my schedule. And I'm amazed at how strict I am to some things. Oftentimes, I will ask Donna, or Donna will ask me, what are you going to do today? And I think by asking that, we're supposed to have a plan for the day. <laughs> my plan is, I'm carving out about three hours for that recliner. Or today, if I feel just really good, I'm going to go out to my shop for about two hours. Now, I may not do anything of note out there. I may just polish my tools or something, you know. It may not be anything, but I, I, have, I told Donna early on after I had surgery, I miss my shop. I need some shop time. And finally, I felt like going down the back steps and walking out and sitting down in the shop. And I, told, I came back and I said, I feel like I've been with an old friend. <laughs> but I can fill my day with everything under the sun. But do I have time for Jesus? There was a lady in our church when I was growing up used to sing a song, and I, I think I've sung it one time. It's titled, Have You Any Time for Jesus? One of the lines says, Time for business, time for pleasure, time to revel on in sin, but you must take time for Jesus before your life ends or something like that. It's so important that we take time for Jesus. Now, it's doubtful that the angels are going to appear and announce. But the Holy Spirit nudges us. You haven't had your devotion time today. You haven't talked to the Lord today. You haven't, you know, you may have said, bless me and bless my son John and bless, but did you take time to listen to him? Have we any time for Jesus in this rushing Christmas season for us to remember unto us is born a Savior, Christ the Lord? Would you stand with me, please? Don't tell Pastor how early I quit preaching. <laughs> Father, I thank you for the gift of your son. I'm so grateful, Lord, that he came born as a baby in a manger. I'm so grateful, Lord, that he was just like we are. And I pray, God, that you will help us to always have time. Have a place for Jesus. I pray, Lord, right now, if there's anyone here who does not know you, God, that they would make time right now for Jesus. That they would stop procrastinating, stop putting it off, and they would turn their hearts to you. While your heads are bowed, Is there someone here today and you've just not taken time for Jesus? You may have gone to church for years. You may have had Christian parents, but you've not given your life to Jesus. Let me see your hand, please, if you are. Anywhere in the building, 
I'd like to give my life to Jesus. I'd like to make room and time for him. Let me invite you to come and pray today. Spend some time with Jesus before you leave. Take that time and kneel before him and seek his face, would you? As she sings, would you come and pray, please? My Jesus, my Savior.